Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking about kitchens, updating them, making changes to them. I'm gonna walk you through some real kitchens and share with you the changes I would make to update them without gut renovating them. Kitchen updates are expensive enough as they are so we can get a really great look on a budget. We're gonna get into it. We've got a lot to get through so let's get into the video. Now this first kitchen looks really good. It's very fresh, it's very bright. We do have white cabinetry and and a light colored countertop and backsplash. I know white cabinets are not for everyone, that's okay. But what I want you to take away from this kitchen are two things really. One, we have a bar height counter here where you would put stools around it. And this isn't super timeless and it's something I would hold off on this kitchen on updating because I actually really like the countertops and in order to lower this you would have to redo them but if you are in the position where you're doing a kitchen renovation that's one of the number one things I think updates a space and makes it more functional because when you have this high countertop you have to have bar stools or bar height stools and that's not really that comfortable for everyone maybe you like it to block off some of the dirty dishes in the sink and I totally get that but it's worth considering lowering that if possible, but it does mean you'd have to redo your countertops. Now the other thing I think would really update this kitchen is if this gap of space above the cabinetry we have here, you can see right above the stove where the microwave is, it goes all the way up and it's actually a bulkhead there, and then everything else is recessed behind you, you have that open space there. While I typically recommend filling that in, in this kitchen, if you wanted to update it, I wouldn't really bother that much with it because Everything in here is already really great and you probably wouldn't be able to match the cabinetry or get it exact, so I wouldn't build out a bulkhead. I would paint all of the wall space there the same color white as the cabinetry to create the illusion that it's not there. Because when we have a contrasting color above cabinetry like we do here, we have this yellow tone, it actually draws our attention to that gap of space there and it brings the height of that down. So I would paint all of that, including the bulkhead above the stove, all white to really bring the eye up and create the illusion that the cabinetry does extend to the ceiling. And a lot of people don't want their cabinetry to go that high because they either can't reach it, they don't need that storage. I personally like it because I'm not cleaning on top of the cabinetry, so I'd rather have a bulkhead, I'd rather have something there. This kitchen doesn't have that. So I think making those two changes would really update this kitchen and make it look a lot more expensive. And they're not the biggest jobs. You're not gutting out a kitchen, you're not messing with the drywall and cabinetry and all of that, you would have to replace the countertops in order to lower that bar height. But I think doing those changes would create more functionality in the space and improve the overall look. Here's another kitchen that's designed really well. I do like this. Once again, it does have white cabinetry and this is something that was very popular for quite a while. Now we're liking more wood tone cabinetry or painted kitchen. So it is something to keep in mind as we go forward and we go through these spaces because they do need a little bit of updating and that's what the entire point of this is. Now this kitchen, I really like the dark granite and the dark wood floor. I think these two work really nicely off of each other and I know marble is super in, but this granite actually looks really great here and I think it being juxtaposed with this gray backsplash is pretty interesting and this is actually a subway tile done in a herringbone pattern and I think it plays really nicely it adds a modern feel to the space now once again I think that the color of the walls above the cabinetry is actually distracting from everything happening because it reads as being very yellow in a space that doesn't need to be very yellow so above the cabinetry I would paint it the same white as the cabinets but what I want to focus in on here is actually the space around this window above the sink I would take the bit of wall on either side of this window and and paint it gray to match the tile. I'd add some sort of blind treatment. Maybe that's a Roman shade. Maybe it's a wooden blind that matches the bar stools or even the wood of the floor to bring a little bit of that wood tone up towards the ceiling. But you would want to position it in a specific way that it would actually hide where the color changes. Because I would actually do that gray paint up to the top of the window and then change it into white to match the cabinetry to eliminate some of the visual interest in this space. Because I think when you have the yellow next to the gray next to the white, it actually makes it look a little bit dated, a little aged. So I would change that out to kind of create the illusion that it's not really there. I'd also change out the faucet here. It looks a little builder grade. It looks a little bit cheap to me. I think you could do something really elevated in this space that would create a luxury feeling. I'd probably also change out the hardware. This kind of curved shape looks a little bit early 2000s to me. And last but not least, I want you to take a look at the refrigerator and the way it's fitting in 
in this space. It doesn't fit great because it probably was added after the fact, or this might have been a home that was purchased like with no refrigerator. How often do we see that? So it doesn't fit here perfectly. And I would say when you go to replace a refrigerator, focus on getting one that really fits the space. I'd rather have like mismatched brands and a refrigerator that fits really beautifully than have everything match in one that doesn't. But what I think was designed really beautifully here is actually this little notch in the drywall next to the refrigerator. So you can see that the drywall kind of is extended out and cut back in before this door frame and this is great because it allows the refrigerator door to open these doors actually open they swing out so you have an extra bulkiness you have extra depth when the refrigerator is open and this notch allows that to happen I would take and paint this drywall whatever color you chose to go with above the cabinetry to match those cabinets just to create the illusion that the refrigerator is more built in than it is and I would change that color back to whatever wall color you chose if it is this color kind of warm tone at that corner. So I bring the paint in and then change it around this door frame just to create the illusion that the refrigerator is a little bit more built in than it is and to create some visual interest in this area. Otherwise, I think this kitchen looks really great. I might also go over the outlets with some of my favorite paintable outlet covers that I'm gonna link for you in the description box and paint them in a gray to match the tile. That way they kind of disappear. I think the really stark white outlet on the gray backsplash stands out a little bit more more than I personally would like to see. That kitchen had a lot of potential and was really great. And this next one is also, but this one has a couple of more dated features. I think a little bit more could be done to this kitchen to really, really elevate it. And I think the potential here is amazing. So this space is really great. It is a bigger kitchen and I really love the Eden area we have here. But what I wanna draw your attention to is of course the wallpaper border here. It is a little bit of, a dated feeling to this space. So I would remove it and I would replace it with crown molding, but I would paint the bulkhead above the cabinetry the same white and I'd paint the crown molding that same color. That would create the illusion that the cabinetry goes to the ceiling. And I'm not mad at having a bulkhead above cabinetry. I do think, you know, you could have extended the cabinetry up, but it is a great way to get a really built in look on standard cabinets that you didn't have to custom order or have made. So I think this is really great. I would add that crown molding there and paint the bulkhead to match the cabinetry. I also really am not feeling the light fixtures in this space because they are kind of silver and white and then the cabinets are all white. The hardware on the cabinet is all white. So I think we need a little contrast. I'd like to see something that's maybe like an iron, something that has a little bit of an industrial or farmhouse look to it, I think would create a little bit of atmosphere in this space because right now the light fixtures are giving us light and not much else. And I think we could really make a statement with them because of how neutral this space is. I'd also like to point out the backsplash here. The splash back or this piece of countertop that extends up the wall wasn't removed before the backsplash was installed. This isn't something I love to see. I think if you're adding a backsplash to a kitchen that doesn't already have it, you just remove that. And if you're going over that with tile anyway, it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of drywall damage there as long as you have enough to adhere the tile to. So I would have removed it and brought that tile all the way down. I think it would have just polished that off a little bit. I'd once again update the faucet in here because this faucet, while it has the little spray that comes out of the countertop, I just think you get a cleaner look when you don't have that. And I might actually put like a butt in there to turn on the garbage disposal or maybe just a vent for the dishwasher to fill in the hole in the countertop. I'd keep the granite there because I don't think it actually looks bad at all. And I personally would probably pull a lighter, more creamer tone out of that granite to paint the rest of the walls in the space with. I think the island could definitely be updated. And I think creating a furniture-like effect with this piece would be really wonderful. I'd have one of the cabinets retrofitted to be a cubby to to hide the microwave in because right now it's sitting on the countertop and I don't love that. But I would add a baseboard around this and I'd also add probably like furniture legs to the actual part of the island that extends out that you'd sit under. The bar stools in this kitchen don't match and it's hard to see but there are three of them. Two of them are white and wood tone. The other one is all wood. The one that's all wood is the correct height but the ones that are white with the wood tone I think look a little better. I think they're a little more cohesive and they pull from the cabinetry and the floor. So 
I'd look into replacing them with, with three bar stools that are the correct height but have that two-tone color scheme. I think this kitchen has a little bit of a country or cottage like feel to it so using a really cohesive wood tone scheme or color scheme in the space would actually benefit it and it does look really great in these types of spaces so I would definitely give that some consideration. And last but not least I would address this dining area here. So I think when you have a bay window and you have a little bit more of a relaxed style that is in the traditional realm having a window seat is just amazing. I think that would be so fantastic here and the windows are actually high enough that you could get a bench in there have something customized and built in that would be really great for this space and you also have a little bit of a round table here that has leaves in it and you could put a leaf in to get an oval shape that would work really beautifully with the dimensions and proportions of a bench seat in this space. And the real reason I say this is because this dining set is all wood and it matches the floor exactly. There's just not enough contrast here in my opinion. So you could do something like have a, a marble lazy susan put on this table to create a little visual interest have some cushions made for these chairs because honestly like a wood chair in my opinion is just not that comfortable so i would have a cushion made to pull some of the colors from the rest of the space i think would be really wonderful but i would stick to whites in this area and that might even mean a rug now not everybody loves a rug in a kitchen because you get crumbs on it it gets dirty and unless you have a little French bulldog who follows you around looking for crumbs everywhere, this might not work for you. And you all know I have one of those. I have a little baby boy, you all know, the iconic and legendary Linus, who has absolutely been dying to see you. So let's bring him in here really quick before we finish talking about this kitchen. There he goes, there's the baby bull. What, what, what is it? Are you looking for some of them crumbs, huh? Are you trying to get all over here and find some stuff? Oh yes, I know, I know bullfrog, oh yes. Do you wanna say hi to everyone? <laughs> what was that a no? Was that a no? Oh yes, look at that. Well what little beast? What? Mm. You would love that kitchen. You would love to run around and chase Cornelius around the island. Oh yes, I know. You're very cute. Okay little mister, we're gonna let you go. Thank you for coming and visiting us, okay? You have nothing to say? Okay, we'll let you get back to your brothers. See you later. <laughs> Okay, this kitchen is wonderful and Linus really likes it. He would love this kitchen because there's so many nooks and crannies that Crumbs could get that he could find and I love that for him. But like I was saying before, having a rug in this space might not be the best option, especially if you're hard wearing on your spaces and you have kids and they're dropping crumbs and doing all of this and that. So I would look for a way to build some visual interest if you didn't like that bench seating in this space because I think that would create contrast. You could do the bench in white and then do an upholstered seat you could do this wood table and then keep like two of the chairs in this space and would really really benefit it I think would create a built-in look and I just really like a bench seat I like that built-in feature in a kitchen I think it looks so welcoming so cozy and warm plus if you put your kids in there they're kind of stuck and they can't just push their chair out and run away they have to scoot around and everything and you can be like no you need to sit here and finish eating before you run off and of course I absolutely love that for you. Let's talk about this next kitchen. It has got a lot of great things going for it. And one of the things I wanna point out to you here is actually the granite that's in this kitchen. It's a builder grade granite. It's kind of standard. A lot of homes have this. And in this space, I think it works really nicely because we have a lot of other natural tones happening. You have a lot of contrast and a rich wood tone on the floors. The cabinetry is another wood tone. A little bit of a rustic element happening that this type of granite works really beautifully with. And I actually like the backsplash. It looks to me like it's a faux tumbled marble. It has a little bit too much consistency in the color for me to be a natural stone, but it's in a subway tile. It kind of has that tumbled marble look to it. I also want to point out to you about this backsplash that I'm loving the way it's trimmed out with the tile turned in a different direction. I think that actually looks so much better than having like a little metal trim piece or cap put on the stone. I really like a clean edge on a backsplash if you have to see it on this type of like blunt edge here. So the way they've trimmed this out looks really good to me instead of having like a metal cap or a trim piece put there or having to figure something else out. Like if you have slab cut stone, yeah, seeing the border over at the edge of it, it's like, oh, it's slab, like that's great. But when you have tile, you get like a rough edge from where the tiles have been cut clean at that 
that edge. So I think this actually looks really good. Once again, I would try and do something to hide all of these outlets. There are so many of them here in this kitchen and they kind of distract from the stone. In this kitchen, I need to see some sort of blind fabric option here to pull some of the warmth of this stone backsplash and countertop up to the ceiling because the walls are painted in a gray tone and it looks like the ceiling might actually be that same color. The crown molding doesn't continue or extend into the kitchen, which doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. I would have personally done that, but it's not in this space, so I would continue that through it. But adding a window treatment in a warm tone to pull some of that warmth from the countertop and even the floor upwards would really benefit this window space here. Also, you have an island here that has, once again, these kind of cheap looking faucets. It's functional. It works really great. These are pretty durable. So that's all really good. But you have the option to make a task, a chore, like doing dishes, an experience. You have the opportunity to elevate it by having a really nice faucet. Something I want to point out to you here is actually the vent hood above the stove. This looks like it was retrofitted in here, like a, a microwave used to be in this space because you can see the gap in the tile. So I think this was added afterward. And then there was a gap of space above the tile and you're kind of like, well, what do I do with this? Because now the microwave isn't covering up this bit of wall. So they added in a glass backsplash tile. I just don't like it. I don't think it looks good. I think it has a mid-century reference as where everything else has a little bit more of a rustic vibe to it. So for me, what I would have done is I would have gone to a stone yard and looked for remnants of a similar type of granite. This is pretty standard. So most of them have a ton of it laying around. And I would have had a small shelf built, probably like three inches deep. And then I would have had slab done as well to extend up to the bottom of that vent hood to cover up the rest of the wall. And what that would have allowed me to do is set things like my salt and pepper shaker, like a little egg timer, or maybe a wooden spoon there to really fill that space in, make it a little bit more useful, but also not have an additional contrast that's distracting from the space. And I know adding a shelf above your oven sounds kind of ridiculous. Like it's going to get greasy. It's going to get dirty. If it's shallow enough, a lot of that steam and grease will pass it, but it's also small enough and low maintenance enough that wiping it down after you cook or every couple of days would have been pretty easy. Plus you could set your spices there as you needed them instead of having to put them back into your spice rack, all of that. I think it would have been more beneficial. So I think making those couple of changes would have elevated this kitchen and made it look really fantastic. Well, there you have it, everyone, and I know you enjoyed this video. I want to hear from my subscribers, though. Share with me what are some updates you would make to these kitchens that maybe I didn't notice or didn't point out. Share with me. Also, let me know what are some of the upgrades you did to your kitchen that really gave it a polished look but didn't involve you gut renovating the space. Share with us in the comment section down below because there are going to be a ton of new people here that they need this advice, and we're more than happy to give it to them. Actually, all of those of you who are new here, be sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Join us here, become a part of the Lashik family, give this video a like, and I also know that you know someone that they probably could use some of this help. They are about to undergo a full kitchen renovation, or maybe their kitchen just needs a little bit of updating and they are stuck, they don't know what to do. Share this video with them because friends help friends, and I will see you in the next one.